The Classical Style by Charles Rosen. Haydn's Piano Trios. Haydn's piano trios are a lesser known but essential series of works alongside his symphonies and quartets. They are unique in that they are solo works for piano, solo violin, and accompanying cello. This is a departure from the string quartet, which developed to give independent importance to all instruments. Critics have charged that Haydn failed to balance the roles of the piano and violin and develop independence for the cello. However, these trios are still brilliant pieces, with surprising octave passages and a feeling of improvisation. The trio's improvisational quality is almost unique in Haydn's work. They have a spontaneous quality, with relaxed forms and dance finales. These qualities make them essential works. The Evolution of Piano Trios Piano trios in the 18th century were written for the best amateurs. The gap between amateur and professional at that time was small. They were not serious pieces, but the performer's virtuosity was very much in place. Without virtuosity, we wouldn't have Mozart's operas or piano concertos. Haydn's piano trios were display pieces for private performance. The violin also takes part in the display, and the cello reinforces the bass. The piano trio was the solution to all the mechanical difficulties of Haydn's day. It allowed for greater possibilities of dynamic inflection. By the beginning of the 19th century, pianos were being built that were more adequate to the demands made by composers. Piano trios allowed for the combination of an instrument that could sustain and sing with the contrapuntal resources of the piano. In conclusion, piano trios played a significant role in the development of the piano as an instrument. They allowed for greater possibilities of dynamic inflection and helped release the imaginations of composers like Haydn and Mozart. The Evolution of Sound in Haydn's Piano Trios the lengthening of violin necks and tighter bow hairs have made the sound more brilliant and penetrating. And the piano has become louder, richer, and less wiry. This change makes it difficult for the violin and piano to play the same melody in thirds, with the violin below the piano. Both instruments are now louder, but the piano is less piercing, the violin more. The cellos used to double the piano bass has been called a hangover from an earlier style. But it is necessary for a unified texture and to tie the music together. Even with the changes in sonority, Haydn's trios remain some of the greatest music ever written. And while only pianists may want to play them, they can still be enjoyed by music lovers who imagine the violin and cello parts. Exploring Haydn's Piano Trios Haydn's trios are a testament to his musical genius. Written for solo instrumentalists, these pieces were created purely for pleasure. There are 26 trios, including two by other composers. But it's the 14 masterpieces, written between 1793 and 1796, that showcase Haydn's most mature style. Haydn's harmonic effects are evident in the slow movement of Trio H or 14. The use of harmonies in root position under expressive melodies creates a direct and intense emotional effect. In the finale of this trio, the recapitulation is introduced by this extraordinary passage, where Haydn disrupts the sense of tonality only as a joke, of course. Partly by the octave displacement, partly by the chromatic alteration. For a moment the B sounds like nonsense, and only when the melody starts do we understand it. Haydn's Piano Trios, H21-23 The 1793 sets are dedicated to the Esterhazy princesses. The trios for Princess Nicholas Esterhazy, H21-23, are powerful and imaginative. The E-flat trio stands out for its imposing first movement. The opening measures of the latter exemplify Haydn's unique transformations, demonstrating his mastery in the piano trio format. 
The trios, marked mostly as Allegro Moderato, offer a spacious, relaxed, and broad expansion rarely found in symphonies or quartets. The looser organization distinguishes them from quartets, with a brilliance and massiveness exceeding that of solo piano sonatas, except in select instances. Haydn's trios dedicated to Princess Anton Esterhazy and Teresa Jansen. Haydn's trios dedicated to Princess Anton Esterhazy and Teresa Jansen are noteworthy. Haydn's trio in B-flat major H, 20 features a virtuoso-style first movement. The set of variations showcases the bare two-part counterpoint that Haydn loved. The trio in A major H, 18 features a unique rondo form dance movement. It begins with a two-part theme, followed by a sonata using material based on the opening theme. Haydn's last three trios H, 27 to 29 are his most difficult. Dedicated to Teresa Jansen, the C major trio is a complement to her technique. The first movement is at once brilliant and leisurely. The slow movements of these trios are all surprising. Haydn's late trios. Despite its eccentricities, the trio H.31 showcases Haydn's control of the classical style. It's a return to an earlier style with a transformation of mannerism. The trio's use of silence is a preparation for something crucial. In the development section, the music dies away, and what follows is electrifying. The climax of the whole movement is the main theme played forte in the remote key of a flat major. This is one of Haydn's most imaginative works. The trio has a close relationship with an earlier E major piano sonata. There are resemblances between all three movements of each work. Rebecca Schroeder's Piano Trios Rebecca Schroeder was a young widow in London who copied music for Haydn. These trios are musically distinguished and technically less demanding. The trios in D major H24 and F sharp minor H.26 are both lyrical works. The latter is more exceptional, with a somber tone that it maintains until the end. The slow movement of the F sharp minor trio derives from that of Symphony No. 10, and it intensifies the seriousness of the first. It also shows the superiority of the piano trio to the solo sonata for Haydn. Rebecca Schroeder's Piano Trios The trios in D major H, 24 and F sharp minor H, 26 are both lyrical works. The latter is more exceptional, with a somber tone that it maintains until the end. The first movement is a deeply expressive slow rondo variation. The second theme, in the major, offers a soaring violin solo. Haydn's trio in E-flat major, H30, is expansive and Mozartian in its wealth of themes. Its allegro moderato opening is massive, with melodies flowing continuously and interdependently, creating a fusion of power, lyricism, and logic. Haydn's trio in E-flat major, H30, is expansive and Mozartian in its wealth of themes. The opening bass line immediately brings forward deeply expressive wide chromatic space and continues in a way that anticipates Peage of Tristan.